Hello, this is cycle two, week 21 science, tower construction. This is a really good week. Uh, it's a lot of fun for your students to build towers. Your students likely have a lot of um, sort of practical at home experience building towers and knocking them over. Um, towers are objects that surround us. They're, they're everywhere. You might um, start the, your discussion with the students about towers and how they're made by just asking, who has seen a tower? What's the most famous tower that you know of? What is the tallest tower in the United States? What's the tallest tower uh, in the world? Um, are there any uh, any you know um, towers that you know of that that suffered severe accidents and they partially collapsed? I mean, you've got lots of options depending on the age of your students and what you as a tutor uh, are comfortable doing. Um, but those are good opening kinds of questions to get everyone thinking about it. The key the key science that we want to talk about today is that um, in general we build towers out of um, repeating units of something, right? And so um, in order then to build really tall towers that are also safe towers, so in order to build tall towers that are stable, we have to be very careful about how we put those units together. For example, a CC pencil holder box. If I have two such boxes and I ask my students, to build the tallest tower possible that is sturdy, that is stable, that is safe. If, if I give them that challenge, and then you can even have pairs of students. Who can build the tallest tower that is the most stable tower? Okay, so, and, and the way we then arrange the, the boxes will, will Im impact that a lot. So if I build my tower like this, then my tower is not very tall, but it is pretty sturdy, right? I can move the foundation that the tower is sitting on without disrupting the tower. Well, I can make the tower a lot bigger, right? I could stack them like this, just like that, maybe even like this. That, that tower is certainly a lot taller, but is it very sturdy? No, if I shake my foundation, it starts to move. If I shake my foundation enough, I can knock the tower over. But the tower is in fact so unstable that I can um, let's try that one more time. My tower, uh, when this configuration of the pencil boxes is enough that the I can blow air hard enough and knock it over. So the way I put the tower together matters a lot about how stable the tower is. And of course, it also matters how tall I can make the tower. So those are the two trade-offs then that the students want to, we want our students to make this week as you're doing um, this demonstration, this experiment. The, uh, the foundations guide talks about using um, drinking straws um, to build the tower uh, along with tape. I think that that, that will work okay, but I, I think that honestly that that might be frustrating for some of the students because I think it's hard to get the, the drinking straws um, to stand up. So if, if we're putting together units of the drinking straw with, I'm using masking tape here, right? Then with a little bit of work, Maybe I can balance my tower. We have to get it on an extremely flat surface. It's still moving. An easier thing to do would be to use some some thinking putty or some or some play doh or something kind of like that that I can use to sort of stabilize the base. Now you can imagine students begin building onto their tower. Um, but I don't think we're really illustrating kind of this key point that um, for simple towers like this, <clears throat> we always have to balance how we put the units together with how stable that configuration is and how tall it is, uh, and is it tall enough to meet our needs. Um, this would be, maybe it would be a good point to, to bring a little bit of history in and talk about um, some, some ancient structures. Like, uh, for example, one that comes to my mind are, are the pyramids that the Egyptians built. Now, they, they built those pyramids into that shape, probably for a lot of reasons. Some of them may have been cultural, may have been religious, but from a very practical point of view, for people who are using human labor and very, very primitive tools to build these giant structures, they have to have a base that's much, much bigger than the top of the tower, right? And that's what makes the tower so stable. That's what makes those pyramids so stable. That, that configuration, that structure is incredibly stable. And so I think that's the key point that we want to help our students understand is that the way we arrange the individual blocks matters a lot in terms of how tall it can be and how stable it is. And for, for these kinds of simple towers made up of relatively simple building blocks, we want the base of our tower to be wider 
to be the widest point of the tower and to be wider than the tower is at the top. Right? So um, the students can, can build towers with straws uh, or whatever um, pieces um, you, you would like to use. There's certainly a lot of things, though, that, 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 you, could, um, that you could use. I know uh, our director is um, actually planning to have a couple of different stations for science uh, this week. I think that's a fantastic idea. So the students can use different materials. For example, the students can use drinking cups to build towers. The students could use um, a rolls of toilet paper to build um, towers. The students could use um, classical conversations flashcard uh, packs in order uh, to build towers. Lots of different options um, for the students in order to in order to build um, to build towers. I particularly like the cup example because I think it gives you some flexibility. So if we were to take um, four. If we were to take, let's imagine five cups, sorry, six cups. If we were to take uh, six cups and, and now ask our students, what's the tallest tower you can build that is also stable? And we have to, again, balance those two things. I think the, the, the tallest tower that the students could build would be to linear, linearly stack the six units on top of each other. All right, so the, these cups um, are about five inches Got to measure, yeah, just under, just under five inches, each one, and so we can linear, linearly stack the units together. Then, can we do it? That's a pretty tall tower, and so you you also need a tape measure. Uh, just over 28 inches, All right? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six cups, and I could make something that's almost the linear height um, to, together, right? But is this structure stable? No, it's not. I think there's two easy ways to test and demonstrate stability with your students. I would suggest card tables to, uh, to, to build them on, or if, if you have big heavy tables like this, then have them put them on um, a, a book to use as the real foundation, because you can easily shake the foundation and you can demonstrate that that's moving. I'm not applying very much force at all. All right, let's go back to the wind test. Can I, can I make wind and make this thing fall? I can see it starting to move. It doesn't take very much at all, right? Right? So clearly, that configuration is not very stable. Um, but if I were to take my, my, my same six cups, and now if I make a base of three and a second layer of two, it's not nearly as tall, right? It's about half, it's about four, as, as tall as the other one. It's about 14 inches, but now I can shake the table a lot. I can still get it to fall over, of course, but I have to apply a lot more uh, force. I have to make a lot more wind in order uh, for the, for the, um, for the uh, for the tower for the structure uh, to fall over. So um, I think that this is a good option. So toilet paper um, rolls could be stacked together. Straws could be stacked together. Pencils, if they're not sharpened and they're flat on both ends, you've got lots of different things that you could do uh, and ways to do it. And and then uh, for the more advanced kids, what I suggest is that you, you help them understand. Well, how how tall did I make it? <clears throat> because that's there's a couple of ways to do it. We could simply measure the total height, right, as we just did. But remember, I said the individual units were about five inches, a little less. So another way you could help your older students understand is, so if I have, think of it this way, if I have six uh, cups literally stacked together like this, then the whole, each cup is, is, is about five inches tall, and this entire thing is just over six inches tall. If I stack them um, linearly, I can make a structure that's 28 inches tall, not very stable. If I make a relatively stable structure with a wide base, it's 14 inches tall. We can reference all of those, those heights to the original dimension, the dimension of one, right? So I can make with a very stable structure that's, that's almost three times as tall as the individual unit at 14 inches, or I can make a relatively unstable structure that's uh, almost six of the individual units. Um, as tall as six of the individual units. And you can help your more advanced students start to understand this idea of ratioing, 
right? The height of the structure to the, to the height of the individual unit that I'm using to build it. I think that's a, a more precise way uh, of talking about it than just the absolute um, uh, height uh, of the structure. So uh, a lot of things to think about, a lot of things um, to do. Students are very familiar with towers. It's, I mean, it's just a lot of fun to build towers uh, and to knock them over. So um, I think that you'll have fun. I think that junior students will laugh together as you do this experiment and, uh, and, and enjoy it. This is Cycle 2, Week 21 Science.